Hello, welcome to Biogrades TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Hastings Banda Hastings Banda was the first president of Malawi, formerly known as Nyasa Land, and the leader of the Malawi nationalist movement. He ruled Malawi from 1963 to 1994 using totalitarian political controls and conservative economic policies. Banda's birthday was officially given as May 14, 1906, but he was believed to have been born before the turn of the century, around 1898. At the time of his birth, there were no birth registrations. He was the son of subsistence farmers. He left his village school for his maternal grandparents' home and attended Chayamba Secondary School in Chikondwa. In 1908, he moved to Chilanga Mission Station and was baptized there in 1910. Around 1915 to 1916, Banda set out on foot with an uncle who had been a teacher for Hartley, Southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. In 1917, he left on foot again for Johannesburg in South Africa. He worked there for several years. During this time, he got to know Bishop William Tecumseh Vernon of the African Methodist Episcopal Church AME. Bishop William offered to pay his tuition fee at a Methodist school in the United States if he could pay his own passage. In 1925, he left for New York in the United States. He received a BA in 1931 and a medical degree in 1937 at the University of Chicago and Mehari Medical College in Tennessee, respectively. In order to achieve the qualifications needed to practice in the British Empire, Banda then continued his studies at the University of Edinburgh and subsequently practiced in Northern England and London from 1945 to 1953. Banda first became involved in his homeland politics in the late 1940s when white settlers in the region began asking for the federation of the Rhodesias and Nyasa land. Banda and others in Nyasa land strongly objected to this plan they saw as an extension of white dominance. However, the federation of Rhodesia and Nyasa land was established in 1953. From 1953 to 1958, Banda practiced medicine in Ghana, but from 1956, he was under increasing pressure from Nyasa nationalists to return home. He finally did so to a big welcome in 1958. He went round the country giving anti-federation speeches and the colonial government held him responsible for increasing African resentment and disturbances. In March 1959, a state of emergency was declared and the British authorities had him arrested and imprisoned. He regained his freedom in April 1960 and a few months later, he accepted British constitutional proposals granting Africans in Nyasa land a majority in the Legislative Council. Banda's party emerged winner of the general elections held in August 1961. He served in the capacity of Minister of Natural Resources and Local Government from 1961 to 1963 and he became Prime Minister in 1963, the year the Federation was finally dissolved. He retained the position of Prime Minister when Nyasa Land gained independence in 1964 under the name of Malawi. Banda himself chose the name Malawi for the newly independent country. Soon after independence, some members of Banda's cabinet resigned in protest against Banda's autocratic methods and his accommodation with South Africa and the Portuguese colonies. In 1965, the rebellion broke out, championed by Henry Chipembury, one of the former ministers, but it failed to hold in the countryside. In 1966, 
Malawi became a republic and Banda ruled over a rigid, autocratic, one-party regime, maintained firm control over all aspects of the government, and jailed or executed his political opponents. Banda himself bluntly said about his leadership style, Everything is my business. Everything. Anything I say is law. Literally law. He was declared president for life in 1971. Banda focused on building up his country's infrastructure and increasing agricultural productivity. He established friendly trade and relations with minority-ruled South Africa and to the disappointment of many other African leaders, his foreign policy orientation was quite pro-Western. Malawi was more or less a police state. Mail was opened and often edited. Telephones were tapped and calls were cut off if anyone said a critical word about Banda or the government. Banda encouraged the people to report those who criticized him. Opponents were often arrested, exiled or died under suspicious circumstances. It was only a matter of time before domestic protests became widespread and Western financial aids were withdrawn from Malawi. Banda was then forced to legalize other political parties in 1993. Subsequently, he was voted out of office in the country's first multi-party presidential elections which held in 1994 and in 1996, he gave up the leadership of the Malawi Congress Party. In 1995, Banda was arrested and charged with the murder of former cabinet colleagues 10 years earlier. He was however acquitted due to lack of evidence. A statement of apology was issued on the 4th of January 1996 in the name of H. Kamuzu Banda to the nation shortly after being acquitted in the Mwanza trials. The statement was met with suspicion and disdain. It was also questioned whether Banda actually wrote the statement himself or if someone wrote it on his behalf. In the statement, he begged for forgiveness for any wrongdoing under his regime. Banda died at the City Garden Clinic in Johannesburg, South Africa on the 25th of November 1997, aged 99. Although he was buried in an elaborate ceremony, in the decade after his death, there were calls for a more substantial memorial for the country's first president. Construction of a mausoleum with provision for a library and a dancing arena was begun in 2005 to remember the country's first president. In 2009, a bronze statue of Banda was also erected. From the 10th of April 1995, when former India Prime Minister Mojaji Desai died, Banda was the world's oldest living former head of government until he died in 1997. Banda had no known heirs but had a vast fortune that is managed by his family. He was married at the time of his death. His affair and relationship with English woman Marin French remains largely a mystery. It is claimed she bore him a son, but officially Banda died childless. In 2010, Jumani Johansson claimed to be the son of the late president and was still seeking DNA testing through the courts of Malawi when he died at 45 years. What have we missed out of this biography of Banda? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, Please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.